What does it mean to say that a trait is heritable? If I say that a trait like IQ or your tendency towards introversion or extroversion is 40 to 45 percent heritable, how do you interpret that data or how should you interpret that data? Well, there's quite a big difference between what behavioral scientists uh, and cognitive scientists mean when they say a trait is 40 to 45 percent heritable and what most people have in mind when they hear that it's 40 to 45 percent heritable. And I want to explain the difference because it's a very crucial difference and it's key to understanding what heritability is and isn't. So here's a typical statement from uh, Catherine Asprey and Robert Plowman, who are behavioral geneticists, and they wrote a book studying a whole bunch of traits that humans have that are relevant to education. Things like reading ability, math ability, general IQ, and even tendency towards optimism or pessimism about education. And they find that our ability to read is influenced heavily by our genes, and estimates put it between 60 and 80 percent. But there's a difference between the way most people, especially in the general public, interpret that data, and what Plowman and Asbury and other behavioral geneticists mean when they say 60 to 80 percent heritable. So we're going to talk about that difference. But first, it's worth um, recalling what it means to say that a trait is heritable. To say that a trait is heritable means that at least some, or if not all, of the trait's existence owes to genetic factors rather than environmental factors. So to say that reading ability is heritable means that at least to some degree the trait has a genetic component as opposed to an environmental component. Now that doesn't mean the trait is all genetic, but to say that it's heritable, heritable means that it has at least some genetic component. Well, here's Scott Barry Kaufman explaining the difference between what behavioral genetics geneticists mean and what the general public hears when they hear heritability studies. Kaufman is a cognitive scientist and he did a book called Ungifted about IQ. Heritability estimates, he says, are about understanding sources of similarity and difference in traits between members of a population. It's not to determine how much of any particular individual's trait are due to his or her genes. So it can be explained this way. Here's another fact, uh, or I guess uh, uh, hypothesis that's been validated by scientific research and it's this by age seven IQ shows to be about 40 percent heritable and here's what most people think of when they hear a, a, a data like that they think of IQ or anyone's individual IQ as sort of like a pie chart and when they hear 40 percent heritable they think oh well that means everyone's IQ is 40 percent up to their genetics and 60% up to their environment. So 40% of it is fixed by, by your genes, and then 60% of it is environmentally influenced by things like education or by how you were up, uh, brought up, etc. But that's actually not what heritability studies uh, conclude. When they say that something is 40% heritable, here's what they mean. They mean that if we take a, a general population and we look at the diversity of people's IQs, some of them will score a bit lower, 80 to 85%, some of them will score in the average range closer to 100, uh, 100 points, and some of them will score uh, a bit higher than that, so maybe have an IQ of 120. What they're saying is that 40% of the diversity amongst people's IQs in that population can be explained by genetics. But that's actually a very, very different thing from saying that 40% of any individual's IQ is fixed by their genes. It's a little bit complicated, so I'll, I'll uh, explain it also by uh, talking about how scientists determine a trait's heritability and put a percentage on it. So what we want to do is we want to separate environmental from genetic factors, which is really tough to do because anyone with a genotype or anyone with genes exists in an environment. So separating genes from environment is really tough. So here's what scientists do. They look at identical twins who share 100% of their DNA in common and fraternal twins who share 50% of their DNA in common. And they not only look at whether these twins exhibit the same traits growing up when they live in the same household, but more interestingly, they look at the rare case where uh, twins, maybe because of reasons of adoption or separation at birth or something like that, were, were raised in different environments. And here's the interesting thing about that, why they do it, is because if two twins who are raised in a different environment but share 100% of their DNA in common exhibit the same traits as they're growing up or while, when they're grown up, you can be pretty positive that genes account for maybe a bit more of the existence of that trait than environments because they were raised in different environments and they share the same genetic factors. Now, 
A similar thing can be said if they're raised in the same environment. If identical twins share 100% of their DNA in common, and by age 15 they express the same traits, but they were raised in common, you can probably say some of that is, is genetic, but of course you can also explain it by their similar environments. Well, when they're separated and raised in different environments, um, environment doesn't become a factor. So first, they look at identical twins, and let's say that we're, we're studying reading disabilities. What they're gonna check for is, are twins raised in different environments uh, growing up to uh, have reading disabilities in common? So if one twin who was grown up in this environment shows a reading disability, what's the likelihood that the twin who grew up in a different environment will also have a reading disability, if not that same reading disability? And they look for the commonalities. So some sets of twins will show reading disabilities in common. Maybe a few sets of twins won't show reading disabilities in common. And then some twins will also show no reading disabilities in common. Uh, the more commonality there is among these twins who are raised apart, of course, the more likely we can say that the trait has a genetic component. They're also gonna look at twins who are raised in common, but like we said, this isn't as, as interesting because commonalities uh, they should exhibit more commonalities because they're twins rather than just random members of a population. But remember, they also share an environment in common. So it's really tough to decipher whether they're common, whether they, there's a commonality because of their genes or whether there's a commonality because they were raised by the same parents in the same house, same environment, same school. And they're also going to look at just sets of brothers and sisters um, or even po members of the population at random to set up kind of a control group and see what is the variance between just a typical set of brothers and sisters who don't share as much of their DNA in common as do identical twins. And they're gonna look at all of those three things. And uh, I'm gonna to have to simplify a bit here, but let's say that we determine that all identical twins share identical traits, whether they're raised in common or not. At that point, you can be pretty sure that the heritability estimate is gonna be high, maybe even close to 100% because the reasoning is if they're raised in different environments, but they still show the same traits in common, probably a lot of that owes to genetics. But let's say that half of the identical twins share the identical trait. Well, that'll probably put the heritability estimates a bit lower, at maybe 50%, because half of the identical twins share a reading disability in common or don't share a reading disability. Um, and then half of the identical twins are gonna be one twin shares has a reading disability and the other doesn't. So. The, the heritability estimate might be about 50% or somewhere around there. Now let's say that identical twins don't show any um, commonality at all. Sometimes they have a reading disability in common, sometimes they don't have a reading disability in common, but it's really, you can't really predict uh, from knowing what one twin has, what the other twin will have. At that point, the heritability estimate's gonna be lower, zero to whatever percent. Again, that's a little bit of a uh, simplification, but it's, it shows you what it means to say that something is 50% heritable or something like that. So now let's go back to uh, Plowman and Asbury. When they say that our ability to read is heavily influenced by our genes, estimates of heritability tend to hover between 60 to 80%. What they don't mean is what's on the left, that, I, that reading ability is a pie chart where 60% of it in any individual is determined by their genetics and 40% of any individual's ability is determined by environment. What they do mean is that according to identical twin studies and things like that, we can really say that 40, uh, 60 to 80% of the variation in people's reading ability over the population is attributable to the genes. And uh, by one more analogy, let me put it this way. So, uh, I'll give you two statements. Say that you uh, take a final exam in a class and you also fill out a survey that, that talks about how many hours you studied for the test. Your professor could say, um, I've determined that 40 to 60 percent of your test grades, variation in test grades, can be explained by the number of hours that you've studied. That's similar to what behavioral geneticists mean when they say that reading ability is 60 to 80 percent heritable. What they don't, uh, another statement could be, uh, Johnny, I know that 40 to 60% of your test grade was determined by how many hours you've studied. And that's like what most people think of when we think about what heritability means. It doesn't mean anything about an individual's trait and how it's made up. It means uh, what explains the difference between members of a population.
So whenever you hear heritability studies, make sure that you uh, keep in mind that it basically explains diversity of population. It doesn't do anything to explain how much of any individual's trait owes to genes or how much to environment. Very important distinction.